there is an injustice, whether it's against you or someone you love or someone you believe in, stand up. Don't sit down. Don't sit down on them because you know, they need you. Hey, everybody, welcome to Popcorn Planet, where we're covering the Johnny Depp trial after each trial day with the post recap show. I hope you'll start spreading the word so we can help get everyone updated if they miss the trial or can't watch it for eight hours a day. We're going to try our best to give you about an hour at the end of every trial day to some of the most important parts from both sides. That is my goal. Uh, And today was an interesting one for sure. Uh, The star to me, without a doubt, was Mr. Isaac uh, Baruch, I think is how we say it. Uh, And he, I know all over Twitter, as people have been just talking about him in great detail uh what an incredible testimony and we're going to break that down how did the defense allow him to keep just saying some of the things he said i still can't process it i thought the defense completely whiffed it today it was it was shocking at times what their how their responses were we're going to break all that down as well as uh there's a lot of debate about the makeup this was a witness that saw Amber firsthand after the incident and in good lighting, looked closely multiple times across the days where she says she had injury and he saw nothing. And it really comes down to his credibility and what they tried to do was blame, well, Sir, you're a man. You don't know her makeup routine. How do you know she didn't have makeup on? Well, I'm so happy because we have a special guest joining us. Uh, One of our own Popcorn Planeteers uh, was in the chat, and she was telling us she's a makeup artist. Paige, welcome to the show, Paige. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, so you are a makeup teacher. You've done makeup for years. You understand the foundations of makeup, how it works. You can speak uh, professionally on makeup in general. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in the industry for um, 10 years, and I'm also a licensed esthetician. So I know about the Amica cream, as <laughs> they would like to call it. Um, and yeah, I, um, I'm an instructor, so I teach makeup as well. I love it. So we're going to break that down. Robin is also here. Happy to have you back, Robin. Thanks for all your help. Uh, good to see you. How, how, did you. Did you enjoy today's re- uh, trial? Uh, well, I liked Isaac like everybody did. You know, he's very animated. He's got a good personality. He's very New York or Jersey. I couldn't tell which yeah, he's accent like Uncle, that uh, was. He was like the Uncle uh, Louie who made the, the IT thing last, yesterday. It was very funny, right? Exactly. The, the second witness uh, was a very technical, third-party, neutral witness. Uh, lots of details establishing fact, but more or less... Oh, yawn. Yes, we, we, will, we will break that down. And then on the phone also, we have Linda. Are you there, Linda? Hello. Yeah. First of all, I have to I just wanted Linda to come on just so I could properly thank her. She's been helping tremendously behind the scenes. And you've done some court reporting in the past. So she's been yes. helping us with some timestamp notes uh, that really just help. Uh, to break down and, and have us break down like where things are, how to, how, to, how to bring you the recaps and how do I try to pull clips quickly right after this show because it's an AOR stream. You guys got to understand it's, it's really hard. I'm trying, we're trying our best um, to edit and break things down as we go. Usually I use lunch, their lunch break to edit something from the first half of the day. Uh, and I, uh, Linda, thank you. Cause this, this chart you've been putting together is going to help us tremendously as we go through. So thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you got to watch it. You were paying attention, keeping <laughs> diligent notes. Uh, what was your quick takeaway? I loved Isaac. If that, that's how you say his name, right? Yep. Isaac. I loved his honesty. I mean, I felt just watching him and not know, I knew nothing about him. It just felt, he was telling the truth in my opinion um he stayed the same he had no um characteristics or behaviors that came out to me that were unusual um and i love the fact that just him talking in general made johnny smile multiple times yeah and Mm amber let's let's point out and amber smiled there was a (laughs) moment where even the cold as ice queen who was doing so much as she could to block the eye contact as this man was speaking nicely about her. That was what was so telling to me. He wasn't just hating on her right away. He was sharing how much he loved her and appreciated her and how surprised he was when all this went down. And as he was sharing this, it was so telling to me from a body language perspective of just how she refused to engage with him. It was a huge tell where she just didn't want to confront this person who I took that as clearly she knew she was caught and didn't want to confront him, right? It was very telling. But then at a certain point, as the whole courtroom was laughing, even she couldn't resist. And we'll play that clip as well. So, yeah, well said, Linda. And and thanks again for this. All right. Well, we got a lot to break down. I want to go through sort of in order how things happened. But the biggest mistake today, 
what we titled this video about was Isaac. They asked Isaac too many damn questions that they weren't prepared for in the cross-examination. And this makeup debate, I think, really was a stumble that I don't know what on earth she was talking about. Now, we, there, I, I did a whole video on Isaac. You can watch that in more detail. I don't want to replay the entire clip here. I highly encourage you to go check it out, but that's why I wanted to post a longer video. It's about a 20-minute video you can watch where you can get the real uh, about 13-minute summary and some of my comments throughout. Uh, but this, I want to sh this opening is important, I think. It's insane. And Mr. Or, sorry, this is the ending. This, the end, we're going to play that ending, which was brutal. Um, hold on. Why is this not working now? Give me a second. Sure. At first, when we first powwowed this idea, when, you know, uh, it's, uh, we talked about, all right, what do we do? You know, what's, he's starting to tell the story, story about how he met Johnny. Johnny. Johnny was a fan of his art. Now I'm super fascinated to look up his art. Uh, he was a huge fan of his art and uh, basically was like, hey, I don't want to just I want to buy a piece of his. And then as they got closer, he's like, I don't want to buy a piece. I want to put on a whole show for you. Let me help fund you. Let me be a patron. I'm such a fan. I'd be amazing to like help you be an artist because I believe in you. And uh, so they're like, he's like, oh, my God, yes. He ends up putting them up and giving them a studio so we can actually do his art and live his dream. Incredible generosity from Johnny Depp just because he he liked his art, art and he. Johnny could. Um, and so he basically says, let's do a whole show. Do 25 big pieces. Is it, is it going to be? And we came up with a number. Okay. So there's going to be a certain body of work. I'm not I'm not a known person. I'm just some schnook painter. It's, so it was, and it's, if I was a famous painter, I could make five paintings and, and the room will fill up. But so we decided, okay, like 25 pieces of work, large scale. And I would, and Johnny says, "Hey, what? How long do you think this will take?" I said, "I've never done it before. I don't know. Maybe a few months." And were you able to comp complete the paintings in the in a few months? No. <laughs> it's, 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 so there was just uh, just to recap it and see feel it was as you watch his whole testimony there was the the room just was with him you know what i mean just sometimes you're with the witness or you're not and whether he's telling the truth or not it just makes you believe his credibility because he's very likable he's lovable is he's, he's jovial everyone's laughing he's positive he's not losing his cool yeah he's got the new thick new york accent type of thing but I didn't think he was being sneaky or slimy. You know, it felt like he was just a no bullshitter type of guy, right? And so at this point, the the audience was wrapped with him, just it, 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 listening to his every word and sort of agreeing. Is is how I sort of uh, as I took it. You know, paintings. It took me like almost two months, and I'm t I'm start freaking out. Going, uh, I'm only got two paintings, and all right, I got to do twenty five. I said f a few months. So I ended up going to Johnny's place and and saying, "Hey, look." See now, I believe him. I believe he feels like he feels like he's nervous to tell Johnny, "I didn't get this job that you've been paying me to do." In a way, like he was letting him down. You you can feel. I don't know. I just felt a credibility here. And then he goes and tells Johnny, "Like, oh, I got it. I didn't get the pieces done." Dude, this is gonna take a lot longer than a a, a, a few. I, I could only make two paintings. And how did Mr. Depp react? He looks at me and he starts laughing and he says, Ike, don't worry. I do not care. I just want you to paint however long it takes. Just, I want you to paint every day. During the course of you could just see the joy in Johnny's eyes. Yeah. It's and again, I this is all about Johnny's character, right? They're setting this up early and they have to preemptively sort of point out the fact that yes, he's been paid, he's gotten a lot of things. Can that make him not a reliable witness? We'll talk about that. But I just think that there was a moment of realness between these two friends and Johnny, not like happy, like, yeah, I'm a I'm a, I'm the big shit, right? I I'm a, yay, praise me. Just more that he's like, Yeah, I, yeah, you're awesome. I wanted to help you. Did you guys get that vibe too as you were watching this and Johnny's sort of smiling the sort of just positivity that was beaming from them both absolutely yeah absolutely he's playing the uh uh he's a patron of the arts you know and when you get up in that high position that's what you want to do is you want to lift up you know your friends and people who are on the up and if you see someone with talent you know you don't want to over pressure an artist to produce too much in one in a short amount of time so he's understanding yeah. Johnny seems to be that open spirit that I feel like when he met that guy, whether it was back in the 80s, I believe he said, um, it's just he probably felt that connection. And just watching that guy, his 
the way he talked and his um, hand motions, everything, nothing changed. It, it seemed like you felt like you knew him. So I felt like he, in that way, felt believable. Yeah, I agree completely. I think that he really just wanted to help his friend and he liked his art. So he just wanted to support him. He didn't care how long it took. As long as things are coming out Sorry. and you're actually doing it, not just, you know, doing nothing, but it's taking right. you longer than you originally thought. And you communicate that he's just listening. He's a good That's listener. Real friendship. Yeah. yeah. And I think as we all, wa I mean, as I watched this, this back and forth between the two of them, I was like, yeah, I wish I had a friend like that. Right. We all want like, <laughs> can Isaac be my friend? Like, my God, no wonder he connected so much. It wasn't just like he was, you know, d doing it just trying to make people like him i felt like there was clearly like johnny liked his art and liked him as a person as i heard it you all want a friend who's going to back you up like that and have your back and and, and later in the you're going to see he like breaks down in tears over just sort of how emotional he gets I, I thought it was a huge win for johnny and a huge loss for mm -hmm. the defense uh as they went through this but they set this up and then uh again During you can watch this without without my commentary mr. i put a whole clip up um did mr depp ever give you any they money they also talk yeah. they talk about the um, money he's got about a hundred thousand dollars or something yeah and did you get along with miss Heard? i loved her i fell in love with her just like johnny fell in love with her i fell in love with her she's uh, uh totally respectful gracious to me uh that she's got great teeth uh <laughs> that she treated me with complete respect Anytime I walk into the, she's at the humor wise, total uh, locker, locker room humor, demented humor, totally laughed at, you know, the jokes. He's being so honest, I feel like. I just don't think he's making this up. He's genuinely hurt by her, too. You can just see this hurt, and they were clearly close and got along. And then what the most telling part is this for me she will not look him in the damn eye as he's being complimentary. Uh, made the jokes, totally got along with her. Every time I walked into that place, Isaac, you want something to eat? Isaac, you, you want could, something I just to see drink? guilt, Every right? Time. It's just like, it just There's feels like... There's only one time I remember that she didn't offer because I walked in and she's in the kitchen at the counter and she's doing a beauty facial mask and uh, so she can't offer me. And I'm going, hey, is that something that can help me? And she looked at me and she goes, no. And that, and I'm laughing, and then she laughed after because she didn't realize she was making a joke. <laughs> so I love that it's like, it wasn't even intentional, like Amber was being mean. He's, she was being mean, but yeah, it was funny. Like, you're, yeah, dude, it's not going to help you. Like, haha, you're ugly in a, in a fun, jovial way. Uh, but it even it's sort of well no she's actually being mean but it was funny I accept it as a joke it just shows he was you know humorous but that the, the way she refuses to look at him during this moment I don't know I just thought that was incredibly telling did you guys get that same feel oh, very yeah. forced yeah she's she's trying really really hard to keep her face straight keep her body straight to keep her eyes down to like that smirk that laugh that was a smirk that was a standard ah smirk and yep. she's trying really hard to hide it but it's gonna come through i think that smirk shows and proves that what he's saying was true yep how yep. how he he mm -hmm. was like oh i said a joke and this and that or whatever and her to lift up her head and finally look and smirk and acknowledge that i felt like that was truth right there uh -huh. yeah. And then, and then, like, oh, I can't, I can't do this. I have to look like I'm not affected by any of this. And it's weird because, like, I've been wronged by people. I feel like mad at people, and it's just weird. I wouldn't. Someone I was close to, like, it seems like they were, and then is out there. Let's suppose Amber's telling the truth for a moment, right? Let's play that card. I would be really hurt by Isaac not believing me, right? And I would, I would almost like want to look at him and like give him my eyes to be like, why are you leaving me here? When you know it's, you know, why aren't you trusting me? Like, I, I'm telling you, you know what I mean? Like, there's just a, you can just tell by the body language, by her just not refusing to accept. I don't know, just from my experience of how you would do it. I would never do that. I'd want to be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'd want <laughs> exactly. to mad dog this person and be like, how dare you turn on me in my darkest hour? And so when you, it's the vibe she gives that I know a lot of you connect with, but yeah, do you, right? Am I, am I nuts? Like, I feel like if someone wronged you like that and you were close and you're having to sit there, listen, wouldn't you want to look them in the eye and be like, how dare you leave me? Mm -hmm. I would be staring at them the whole time. Like, how are you mm -hmm. saying this right now? Like, how would you do, you know, do me dirty like that?
I would definitely be trying to put that straight face on and give eye contact and let that person know through that facial expression that uh, I don't I'm not tracking and I don't think it's funny. Yep. Yeah, it's anyway. So we're, it, as as they mentioned at the beginning of their opening, this is the performance of her lifetime, and even she broke. She could she broke there. That she broke against her own rule there because she couldn't contain it. And uh, yeah, I just I don't know. I, I think it's huge mistake. She's got no real emotion here. And I and, and again, if I'm looking at it unbiasedly, like trying to think, all right, maybe okay, what if this is true? I, I just feel like why isn't she showing more emotion or anger towards these people that aren't buying it, right? That aren't believing her story. It's almost, and, and the lawyer, I feel like Elaine is just showing the cards too of just like, she's she's spinning and, and distracting and doing these things she's doing because she has to sell a lie, right? That's what that's how it all really plays to me in these cross-examinations. So all right, and then um, this continues. So let me turn it back up. Always a loving situation. There was loving. You can watch more of this in the clip. Go, I implore and you to go watch the full the Isaac. Face. Is outshining everything, so I can't. But yeah, I want to. Here's a bruise, swelling, redness. It's just Amber's face that she's going like this and showing me. So I'm looking so at the forehead. I'm looking at. The she's really the inspecting side. it because what happens here in this scene is she says Johnny hit me with his phone, right? She threw his phone at me is what she alleges, according to Isaac. But it, but it was more than that. I thought over the course, right? The, the what the the. The actual injuries change all the time. It's so confusing what when more added later. But in this instance, she's saying, well, the, he hit me with the phone. And then he's he clearly hears it, and I, and I believe him. I believe his credibility because I feel like he genuinely likes these two. Just I, Whether I'm, I'm raw, I buy it and, I'm, and I'm, he tricked me, whatever. If I'm sitting there, I buy it because he cares about both. And he's genuinely concerned when he, she says, he, had her, he goes, what? He what? Where? He wants to see the evidence, right? Because it's so unbelievable. He wants to see it because he's like, well, what, what do you mean Johnny did that? Is how I sort of, as he's, his frustration in the moment. And then he, you can tell he really was looking. He was looking and, and, I, and I just, as he's saying that story, I thought the way he's telling the story felt very credible because it made sense based on the narrative that the attorney and him were telling. Now, maybe they prepped this for months. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It freaking worked because it just felt credible. And he wanted to see. He's like, let me see it. All right. I'm looking at this. I'm looking you know, to show me, and I'm looking, and I go, I inspect the face. I'm looking at a forehead. I'm looking at the side of a, a side as of one a would, body. right? I'm looking at a cheek. I'm looking at the, her chin. I'm looking at the other side of the face. I'm looking at the whole thing, and I don't see anything. I don't see anything to. to I don't see a, a cut, a bruise, swelling, redness. It's just Amber's face. That she's going like this and showing me. So he talks about, oh, you know, oh, maybe it's your beauty. It's distracting. The one side of the face is making the other side of the face go. He gives a little joke. Now, I, I, there's a lot more he goes through. There's, the, there's a lot. I implore you to watch it. We may come back to some of it, but I, I want to fast forward to the cross examination so you can see how they handled this. He also mentioned the fact that he kissed her goodbye. And he kissed her on the cheek as he left. Um, and so I want to get to the makeup portion since we have a makeup expert here. Totally sorry. Thank sorry. You, sir. That, uh, no. Sorry. When you showed it the first time, you. And they're talking about the like kiss now. Ridiculous. You she was not wearing makeup. Aki totaled great. Cream. Here it is. Her bathroom. Have you watched her when she's Have you ever watched her bathroom routine in the morning as she puts on her makeup? Applying her makeup in the morning. No. Okay. Do, do you, are you familiar with Amica cream? What is it? Amica. What is it? Amica? Yeah, we we're, go. gonna, we're gonna make a thing of this because she says it like four times. She really leaned into the Amica cream as sort of the this was a smoking gun, guys. The Amica? Yes. <laughs> and then he even he even Amica? Yes, yes, yes. You know, you know, Am Amica cream. Oh. Okay. No, he's not familiar. Do okay. Do you know what type of Foundations. So then she goes into foundations, used. concealers, oh, tints. Do you know what type? Now, I, I, I want to talk about this. But, but before, and now I want to defer to you um, as we get to you, Paige. I looked up Amica Cream. <laughs> and when I searched up Amica Cream, it told me, do you mean Arnica Cream? Now, yeah, can yeah. you can you correct? Or is this is Google right? Were they correcting me correctly that there is no Amica Cream? There's Arnica correct. Cream? 
Okay. Yeah. So there's Arnica cream and it's um, actually known as Arnica Montana, which is a botanical, it's an herb um, remedy that's been used for a while. Um, but there's no such thing as Amica cream. No, it's Arnica. Okay. And, and, and so I could see that maybe without glasses, right? The R and the N could Absolutely. come together and you might think it's Ar- 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 Amica, but I don't know. That just sure seems like she doesn't really know what she's talking about. Correct. As a lawyer, she should be um, going through all of her evidence because she just sounds very um, unprepared. Ignorant. Say. Yeah, yep. exactly. And so it's like it, to have to keep hammering as this like dramatic point of, well, do you know about Amica? Do you know if she puts on her Amica cream? It's just very <laughs> funny to me because it's like that doesn't exist, lady. Like, right. Elaine, no <laughs> one puts on Amica cream. You idiot. Uh, it, it, just, it, it reeks of the desperation of if this was really the solving thing, right? That's going to put, be the smoking gun to help Amber. Well, then we'd all know what it is, right? Because she's acting like we all know what it is, but even she can't get the th- damn thing. Exactly. Right because she clearly Googled. All right. What could reduce swelling? What's something that's going to maybe be something that they didn't know about that could help the brew. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I saw some Amica cream on there. We're going to mention that is how it feels. Yeah. Now I, I want to break down. What is Arnica cream? Just so we, we actually say it right this time. Can you break down sort of what that is? Yeah. So Arnica Montana is, um, it, it can be applied topically and it helps to reduce, um, bruising, swelling and pain, but it doesn't get rid of bruises. Um, it has the best results when it's applied using, um, like a modality, something like a high frequency tool, which it has two different types of gases in it to help penetrate the product. Um, it's also best used with led light therapy, Um, But it's not going to get rid of the bruise. The bruise isn't going to go away because all it's going to do is it's going to help increase the blood circulation to allow the fluid buildup, which is the blood right under the skin to start to dissipate. So it'll help speed up the time, but it's not going to be gone within two days. Thinking a bruise is going to be gone in two days is just um, illogical and it just it's not how the body works well and i want to thank sharon who tipped us me off so thanks to all you guys who have been tipping me i try to get to it all thank you everybody but sharon dm me this one as we were tri- prepping and i think she did because again here are some examples heidi i try to get her on but she's a stunt woman very familiar with arnica cream it does not instantly heal bruises it heals them quicker but bruises still yep. last for days here are two picks taken three days apart while still using arnica notice the bruising spray so it's not makeup it's a rub like uh, you know, what's it called? Like uh, like a lotion. Yeah, like Ben Gay or whatever. It's like something that's gonna help the 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 bruising. It's not a makeup. Which what she kept sort of. So would you apply arnica cream with foundation and concealers and tint? Well, you could, but at that case, there's foundations and creams, um, and tint as she's calling it. Those are designed to address color, but not texture. So when the, you apply a bunch of layers of it, which you would have to, to cover a bruise, there's a huge difference between regular skin and the makeup. So it would be noticeable to anybody. And even from her own lawyer, she said that Amber is not um, talented with makeup. Right. Didn't she say that in one of her like opening statements? So... No, wait, she nope. wasn't talented with the f- photography is what she was. I, I don't know if I... Maybe she did. I missed that. But no, the, uh, Elaine was trying to put forth the argument that, oh, uh, Amber's going to show you later. That was her foreshadowing. Right, to she Amber's doesn't go anywhere without her makeup or something, right? What it was she had... Amber's going to show us how she used her, lo- specifically L'Oreal color correcting concealer Impossible. palette I'm to sorry. cover Can the imagine? bruises. I know. Guys, oh, no. That's what's gonna, they're going to do like the OJ glove moment, aren't they? Where they're going to be like, yes. L'Oreal's going to bring out the makeup. They're going to roll it out. They're going to put the bruise on and they're going to remove the bruise, right? I, oh, God. Is that what they're going to do? But then a fake bruise wouldn't be the same. <laughs> I mean, I can recreate a, a fake bruise um, where makeup wouldn't hinder it and make it look very realistic and even waterproof. Um, but regardless, well, like, yeah, it's let's not, not going to cover it. Let me ask that for real. Again, we're not I'm not trying to just be Team Johnny Depp all day. Realistically, what the defense you just heard from? Well, you don't see her with the routine. Is it a fair defense of, of Elaine there to challenge Ike, Isaac and be like, well, look, dude, you don't know makeup. She could be really good with her makeup. Do you feel like, I'm asking you, Paige, as a makeup expert, could could a woman do enough makeup on to cover up said bruisings, and then when looked up close, 
somebody who's not familiar with makeup might say, oh, she doesn't look like she has any makeup on. Um, no. Um, because doing camouflage makeup, you have to apply a very thick layer of makeup in order to cover that. Even when you use color correcting, you'll have to do layers. Um, and you'll notice a texture difference. And it just, it looks like makeup on the skin. So maybe if she was far away, um, then maybe you wouldn't be able to tell. But up close, you'd be able to see makeup. Interesting. Okay, so you're, there's no there's no smoking gun here where you feel like there is a way to make this up, to, to not make this up. To, I guess it is to make it up, uh, to make it go yeah. away. You, you, you're, you feel confident from your experience that... She, she couldn't have covered it up. A hundred percent. I teach a class um, on camouflage makeup where I actually recreate bruises and I have my students color correct them and cover them. And they're always complaining about the fact that you can still see the makeup on the skin, but you have to understand that you're going to see the makeup on the skin. The bruise may be covered, but you're going to see it. And to be clear, even L'Oreal couldn't do it. Oh, especially L'Oreal couldn't do it. <laughs> We use we use professional products that are used on like movie sets and in HD makeup photo shoots, and L'Oreal wouldn't even come close. Do you think L'Oreal is liking this press right now? I can't imagine they are. Probably, probably not. Sorry, Robin, also, did you want to add something? I, well, I uh, so his page is the professional, but also to put on those layers and layers of makeup that you would have to do to cover a bruise like that would require lots of padding and blending. And just that action itself would probably irritate the bruise or yep. whatever epidermis is there and actually increase the swelling under the makeup, which is going to cause cracking in the makeup and the concealer and the different layers and all of that kind of stuff as well. I'm not a professional, but... <laughs> no, but you're absolutely correct. It's it's definitely true because more pressure, more movement, it's it's going to be noticeable. And then if she smiles, if it was on her eye or her cheek, you would still notice the the cakiness, the thickness. So, all right. So she this, this is a big mistake. This was not a good defense. This are, they're setting this up early. Uh, I'm hoping and assuming Johnny will have makeup artists and witnesses to be able to go against whatever makeup artists they hired. Because let's be clear, guys, <laughs> you can always pay an expert to say what you want. Sadly, they do exist. Um, so it is what it is. You can find a lot of different opinions in these worlds. But it'd be nice to actually see it done, which I've not yet to see. It's, it's all talk, but... Uh, Let's see it. Let's see them actually prove that. Um, now that that was the big lie. This God, this whole Elaine man, she's awful. She's awful. She's just flying at the hip with things. I, I, nothing she said, I felt like landed. There was no got. Excuse me, no gotcha moment at any point where I feel like she tricked him. There was a whole moment here about the she kissing. Ever tell me? And in, in any of those three when? and a half years that you're saying she wasn't wearing it around the house, did she ever say I don't have a stitch of makeup on? This whole argument, well, as how do you know she didn't wear many makeup? Times you just may not have noticed. She's that me, good at makeup. I am wearing makeup. And do you know whether Amber had any Amica cream on makeup? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and again, do you again. know whether she was wearing any Amica cream? <laughs> Isaac is all of us. <laughs> Oh my so gosh! I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Totally I'm sorry. He's like, sorry. I shouldn't laugh. I know, that, but uh, you guys are idiots. Uh, no, <laughs> I wish he'd be like, "What's Amica cream? Can someone tell, get me a copy of this Amica it cream?" The first time. You so that, then they. Women, when you greet. Them. How do you kiss I women? Think, became the next I'm not defense. Understanding any of what you just did. Uh, Isaac again speaking for all of us. I don't understand anything Elaine okay. was saying. So when you, well, well, I'll just leave it at Amber. When you. I take it that you would regularly kiss Amber on the cheek when you used to say hello and to say goodbye. Oh, yeah. Goodbye. Regular. It's a regular. Like, where were they going with this? I'll go to you, Robin. Like, what, what did she think he was going to say? Oh, I didn't really kiss her hard? Like, is that... like? I, I, she goes on this whole tangent to try to, like, understand the pressure and as, as, as Isaac even made fun of, I don't know the torque per level, like... I don't understand. Usually a lawyer isn't supposed to ask something they don't know the answer to, right? And where I it's going to go. I think the best thing to look at would be go back to the footage of when Amber Heard walked into the courtroom yesterday and gave both of her lawyers a little kiss yeah. on the cheek, French yep. style. And that's probably the same thing. And I think what Elaine was trying to do was try to get Isaac to say, oh, yeah, I'm just some dude. I don't know the difference whether a woman's wearing makeup or not. Right. And she stumbled because she, she was not prepared. Uh, and, and, but even with the kissing, it's like, I, you, why are you going down this path? Just ignore it. 
Just ignore it. But she's trying to make a point of like, well, you didn't really kiss her very hard. That's why she didn't wince. Is that's why, huh? But so then you're believing the witness. That's what's so weird. Like, do you believe this witness or not? Because she wants to sort of paint this picture that he's, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, Johnny owns him, right? And he's beholden to Johnny. And so therefore, he's not, he, we can't trust a word he said. Oh, but let's ask how you kissed, because apparently you kissed her. And when you kissed her, yeah, she, it did hurt her, guys. Like, which, which is it? Do you believe his story or do you not believe his story? I, I really don't like how they're trying to have it both ways. Um, but, but, you know, you give, a, you give a peck on the cheek. Or, you know, like, you just touch cheeks and... The fact okay, that we're... that's that. So it's, it's, it's a pretty soft, it's kind of like a, almost a superficial one, or is it a really hard one on the cheek? Uh. No, it's, uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, you kiss someone on the side of the cheek. I don't know, pressure-wise, what kind of talk uh, is there? Uh, I mean, is it, is it just one of these little pecks, uh, or is it is it much harder? No, it's a regular. You, you, you touch, you know, you touch and boom, and that's that. So, so yeah, it's a so touched. She, he, he, he showed very clearly. I went in there and I touched the cheek, and, and I, I've never had an, a, like a bruised cheek or anything. But I imagine that would make one wince, given the damage. No, Am I, is that safe to assume? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The convention is, you know, it symbolizes a kiss, but it's a gesture, and it really is just kind of cheek to cheek, um, kind of a gesture. Uh, if you did, if you had a bruise, yeah, you, I mean, just. Just touching it barely. I don't know, approximately two pounds of torque. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we had a torque expert. Love it. Makeup and torque. I got, I got torque oh, wrenches. You want me to planet. go measure it? <laughs> <laughs> Thought I had my exclusive. I didn't have my exclusive. All right. Exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my God. And then, but, so you think it was pretty hard? They you waste. Elaine the starts about the feces time. yesterday and now. Yeah, I'll sustain ejection. Just would not question. stop about okay. the kissing, and then she and didn't even get to really answer. You also showed that you did a one like this. Did you ever do a, a two kiss when you greeted? Did you Amber? ever do a two kiss? Who? What? What? what <laughs> does this matter? Where is she going? Who cares? Do, well, did you? Did you? Well, all right, all right. You, you touched her, but do you ever do a two? Who? What? What the? F <laughs> do you ever hit her twice? Two no, I'm not European. <laughs> <laughs> No, That's no, right. I'm just, you know, <laughs> nah, I'm a schmuck know, from Yonkers. Both sides. <laughs> Sometimes you even three. I mean, idiocy. But hold on. There was one more before we move on from the makeup to the next point. We have a bunch of stuff to do. But there there was a moment. I don't know if anybody else saw it. Hold on. Where? Uh, bear with me. I noticed it as I watched it the first time. And she's laughed. And, uh, uh, wearing any makeup at that point? There's no bruises. There's no cuts. There's no nothing. There's either sun and tell me i'm crazy hold on bear with me it's a small little thing in her bathroom amica cream do you know about amica cream right first time she asks what is it amica watch amica? amber yes no watch amber okay. do you know what type of foundation uh-oh uh-oh it's arnica cream you know <laughs> look at her leaving yep. the note do you see that uh -huh. she caught it <laughs> but for the most i'll tell you what over three amber's like uh, I'll tell you uh, what, uh i'm I'll not writing you. this in my note uh lawyer please uh Type that's arnica foundation that's totally her used. right here no do writing you know the word arnica She's getting the name wrong. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so they, but then she kept doing it three more times. Uh, so we caught all that. I, I, I just want to play one more time because I just. Mr. Depp. Do you feel like do you feel like emboldened to Mr. Depp? No, I'm not beholden at beholden all. to him. Uh, he, he's giving you a hundred thousand dollars. He's put Over you in that nice. Of, I'm sorry. I started. I didn't hear the whole question. Can he, you say he, it again? You were rent free in, in penthouses for a number of years, and now you've been rent free ever since in suites, sir. That's that's a nice friend. Yeah. Okay. Good answer. It's a nice friend. Does that mean he's uh, uh, you know emboldened to him to have to always give him what he wants? I don't see that. I didn't get that vibe from him at all. He felt like no bullshit. Felt like if Johnny was doing something wrong, he felt like the type of guy who would go tell Johnny, "Get the stop doing that, you idiot." Is is the vibe <laughs> I got from him? Did you get that vibe? You feel because he accepted all this money and this job that therefore he's going to lie under oath for Johnny? Yeah. Uh, look, I'll go to you, Paige. What did you did you get that vibe as you saw him? No, I felt like he was really genuine. Um, I think that you know she, Elaine asked the question if he knew about Johnny's 
um, alcohol and drug use. And he was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I have I have no doubt right. that if <laughs> didn't he say I do it, too? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Did, I did. He? he? There was. I, I. I will find it. But you just reminded me. There was a point. He's like, yeah, but he had some drug use, right? He's like, yeah, I did it with him sometimes. <laughs> oh, well. So exactly. I don't think that he would, you know, just lie just because Johnny's giving him a place to stay. So right. I felt he was genuine. Right. And the chats reminded me of another thing, which I was. Thank you, chat, uh, Robin. I'll go to you now next. And Linda, sorry, I know you're there. It's, I don't see you, so I forget. But uh, let's not forget. Amber's friends are also living there for free, who I'm sure are going to be testifying later. So they got to be careful with this defense because their own friends would get the same criticism if that's what you're going to do. So, all right. So we're, you know, someone's lying for sure, but you can't do that both ways. Robin, did you, did you, obviously, you, you, you know that. I mean, it's crazy for him to say, well, you're getting paid for Johnny, so therefore we can't trust you when Amber's friends are, and sister are literally living in the same place, right? Right, yeah, and plus she had, what, three people living, of her friends living for free, and we kind of always heard about him. He was the guy, the artist that was living in the other apartment on the same floor, right? Uh, he had a, I think he did a depo deposition for UK, but they never used it, but we saw it, and we haven't really heard anything more about his depositions until now, today, so I think that that's where we're at on that, but he's always been there. Um, on Johnny's side from what I know about it. Interesting. All right. Well, so uh, Linda, any thoughts before I keep going? Well, I totally agree with everything. And um, you said it beat me to the punch where um, if I was Isaac, I would have said something to the amount of clearly Johnny is, you know, a very humble, generous guy because look at all these people that are living there for free too. It's not just him. And um, there was a lot of, um, actions of uh, physically every time that Isaac was talking about um, dealing with money that was given to him or um, like even I believe he said something where he had some medical issues and Johnny helped cover it um, you could see in his hand motions even in his facial expressions that he was not um, he was like a little shy to talk about it but he knew he had to yep. to, to verify but, like, I felt like you could see him, like, grasp his hands low and pull back a little bit and, like, kind of dip in a little to his seat, where that just kind of tells you that that motion and that action is just kind of, like, almost like a little boy in a way. I, it's hard to describe, but it just showed he was so grateful to the generosity and friendship of Johnny that, you know, I have chills even talking about it because I just, watching him just made me shout, like, think about wow, Johnny really does good for people. Like, yeah. this is a great example. You know, whether you're Team Johnny, Johnny or Amber, you can't deny what you see with this witness. Yeah, and we're gonna, I, we have a special guest who's dropping in. I'm very excited to get a legal analysis on this, so stay tuned for a second. We'll get, I'm, I'm focusing on Isaac so much because that was really the most star-studded moment of this trial. The beginning was a sister. We'll go through some of the back and forth that I just thought the cross wasn't even very strong. And then the second half of the trial was, oh, my God, it was just so tough to endure endure the the constant checking of footage and verifying by this very dry uh business manager uh we'll, we'll we'll gloss over that a little bit but there really wasn't much to take away from any of it it was more of establishing because that's what well, i learned uh talking to uh, legal bites that this was the process that both teams agreed upon that's why it became so tedious and annoying Ideally, didn't seem like it was good, but it's so contentious that that was the only way they could agree was to do it in the process they did it today. And so there will be more of that. Um, but uh, I'm going to wait till he comes in because I have some legal questions. Uh, we are waiting before I make sure he's in before I tease it. Uh, let's let's watch. Let's watch this quick, actually. When I, I wrote it down. That you oh, were... when th so I love this. When were you, were you angry? Uh, why were you angry at Amber? I think you testified already. You're pretty angry with Ms. Hurd, right? When the best answer <laughs> in these depositions, <laughs> but you got to be careful. And, and on like you, you got you know he does want to support Johnny. I get it. So he wants to be careful not to say something by accident that sets them and opens them up to more things that just make it complicated, right? And uh, he's got to answer honestly. And so, brilliant. Are you Because they're trying to prove you're not credible because 
you're angry at Amber, right? You can't be credible if you're angry at Amber. And in fact, he is here. So excited to have the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Christopher Melcher, attorney at law, joining our show. You know him from the free Britney movie. Oh, there he is. What's up, sir? Oh, hey. calling in from home. Hey, we got Andy. a special call. Uh, how lucky am I to have you at, on speed dial when I have these things? Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show, sir. Well, thanks for having me. And and I watched the your recap of Isaac well, I heard him called Baruch. I would probably say Baruch, but uh, really, really great clips. I mean, just fantastic and a lot of stuff to to learn there on basically what not to do <laughs> as a lawyer on cross. Well, so I'm so because I'm I'm there again. I'm going to play this one clip for those that missed it. Here we are in the cross. So it's perfect timing because I got questions and I want you to react. How on earth did Amber's lawyer allow this to go this far? So here's the moment. The question was. So clearly you're angry at Amber. They're trying to guess, before I even play it, what's Elaine, the defense attorney's, what is her reasoning in trying to get him to admit to being angry, that he's therefore not credible? Christopher, well, yeah, yeah it, it's all about, all about trying to discredit the witness. And, you know, when, because the jury can't go back in time and replay this incident. So all we are left with uh, on the jury is to kind of listen to a witness come in and say, this is what I saw, heard, or experienced. And you're never going to really shake the witness in, in the cross to say, oh, yeah, I was lying. I didn't see that. So what you want to do is uh, go to their credibility and motivations, their reasons for lying. And so she's trying to establish or explore those, which is a fine thing to do on cross. It's just she doesn't know what she's doing. Right, and she wasn't prepared. So I, 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 I'm so excited to watch this with your commentary. So here we go. Are, were you angry? I, I wrote it down. He wrote when? Oh, were... about all the phony, about the <laughs> phony pictures <laughs> that were that were taken and put in uh, tabloids and about the fake narrative and about... Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm, why, right? Wouldn't you immediately be like, oh, no, sir, we're focus on the question. Why is she letting him talk? The way she's uh, trying to... Uh, like, Team Johnny to... must have been sitting there, like, doing cartwheels in her head, uh, right? Got a... Because uh, they can't say any of this, but they knew this guy was just going to keep going. And... A, a, a fraudulent yeah. DV claim to extort and blackmail uh, <laughs> a man? Uh, yeah, that kind of got me... Uh, uh, <laughs> Frustrated, confused, <laughs> angry, upset. Could he have answered that any better, Christopher? I mean, it was so well done. It wasn't angry. It wasn't me like mean or menacing, right? He, he is an incredible witness. And um, if Amber's lawyers were listening on direct, so when, when Johnny's lawyer had him on, you know, kind of friendly softball questions, they should have realized this is a witness not to play with because he's funny and he's trying to be fair to both sides. He acknowledges he really liked Amber. He said she's a good person. She was always gracious to him. She gave He gave examples about how he would go over to the house and she would pay attention to him. Do you need something to eat? Do you need something to drink? Right. And, and you know, that's nice to receive that kind of treatment when you walk into anybody's household. But when it's a celebrity, you kind of expect, like, no one's ever going to pay attention to you. But here, you know, Amber treated him really well, and he went out of his way to say that. And 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 he's he has a good mannerism about him. Look, look at his hand expression. I can't do that on the camera, but he's he's got his palm open. This is a very open style. And so if they were listening to Smash this, they would the say, like this button is somebody and subscribe to the channel. Amber turd, 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 you are scum. Wow, there's sorry for the interruption, but yeah, if you tip over $25, you get to scream Amber turd over and over again. But thank you, Joey. I'll come back to you, Joey. But not to interrupt, Christopher, yes, open hand gestures. There's a lot of just positivity that feels like Elaine just wasn't paying attention. And you said it best. This is not someone to mess with. It's not somebody to mess with. And, and so on cross, there were good questions that she tried to ask, um, but she didn't control the witness. So in cross-examination, you are con in control of this witness, and you do not let the witness speak unless you command the witness to speak. And when the witness speaks, it's going to be a yes or no and no explanation. And the way you achieve that is by structuring the questions in a way to which there is only a yes or no explanation to it. And right. you never allow the witness to explain unless in a rare case, there's just no good explanation. And then you give them the rope. But the, the question here that you displayed was like, were you upset? 
and she didn't she didn't explain were you like, angry not even upset what? but wait just to be clear not to interrupt yeah. angry it was such a meaner word he, of course he's upset like no shit he's upset yeah. but angry is more of the menacing word of it correct sure yeah and and without then being precise about it what time what place about what topic and that allowed then the witness to have free reign and saying oh if you're talking about this sure and, and that testimony, that little vignette of testimony that he gave, he could have never done that on direct. They would have got shut down immediately for leading the witness or being just argumentative. But here you're having an argument on cross and th this, this lawyer should not be doing cross examination. This is textbook how not to do it. And there were more points scored for Johnny on cross than there were on direct. Right. So here it was. So then she she gets this answer where he just goes off, I guess, to, to establish bias, whatever her thought was. And then she goes again. Yes. Which is why I said the best thing for us to do is not to talk to each other. OK. And, yes. And, and was it fair to say you're still angry with her? Oh, you know something? It's six years. But it's we just heard you give years. your version. Am I angry anymore? I'm not, you know, I, what I am is tired, oh. and I want this all to end. Her to go heal, him to go heal, so, you know. You this think. is, hearing this is like, how, right? The, the, Amber and her, the rest of the team sitting there had to start squirming. No, Christopher? Yeah, the, the witness is going way off, and, and it's, there's no points being scored for Amber. So the, the cross should have been done surgically, you know, do you admit that Johnny gave you $100,000? Yes. Do you admit that Johnny gave you free rent? Yes. We're not worthy. You know, We're sorry. Not worthy. Thank you, Mike. We're not worthy. People are very passionate We're about this clip. And I guess We're me stop. exposing this because I We're, th this is an important one to get out there. So thank you, Mike. I will get to all your super chats. Keep it coming. You guys are incredible. But I, I know Christopher's here. I want to get through them. So don't, part of I ignore, don't give you as much love, Mike, and others, but I'll come back, I promise. But keep going. Yeah. And, and, and sorry well, if I'm not playing the whole clip, guys. You can watch the clip in its entirety on my video, which Christopher watched, so you could have watched too. I want to get his analysis. That's why we're breaking it down. But sorry, continue, Christopher. Yeah, you want to be methodical that clip, here, right? You got about 20 minutes there. It's well worth the watch. I loved it. It's probably the best reporting, honestly, that you have, Andy, because I'm following the story for other media outlets. And when I'm getting ready to, to comment, I'm looking at your channel and your stuff because you got I'm the so best honored. coverage of this. Thank you, my man. I'm so honored. Yeah, that's. I, it's been. It's been. A, it's been tough, but yeah, I figured I could just stream all day, or I could try to really organize it. And so, Linda, everybody on the team that's been helping me, Bravo! I, I hope you just heard that because that's an amazing compliment. Yeah. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah, you, but so he was. Got a, thank you, a thank great you. Team. Um, but so, so he was. You want to be methodical and you're questioning to get the right answer, and so now you've let him loose like he's doing here, right? And this is bad news. That, that's it. So all the lawyers think that they're great at cross, but very few are. And also the client expects a show. So Amber's thinking, I want my lawyer to go up there and cross and, and devastate. The jury's also looking at cross and saying, OK, this guy just said all this stuff. I'm waiting for you now, Amber's lawyer, to come in, cross and destroy. And so there's a lot of expectations about it. And I think the effective question is probably one of those two that I would have asked, get in, get out, and then argue it at closing. Because at closing, it's Amber's lawyer all alone, uninterrupted, and owns the floor and then can say, you heard this witness, never had an art career, get $100,000 and free rent and all this stuff. He had a motivation. But um, not try and argue that on cross because you will never, no one can win an argument against this guy. Right. He's too gregarious. He's telling the truth, obviously. He's being fair to both sides. He is devastating as a witness to Amber. Right, the jury's not going to forget this guy. But so, so anyway, just to, so we finish the clip. People. Are you angry? No, he's tired. And, and honestly, this this speech which I put on Twitter because I wanted to make sure all you guys could share this clip. Isaac is all of us. Have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created, and it's gone out the door and around the world. And so I don't. Need, I I can't even paint anymore. I've stopped painting for the last who knows how many years. And that's affected by stuff. It's, it's, it, I don't, I, I'm not angry at anybody. I want the best for her, for her to take her responsibility, heal, and, 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 and move on, move on. And, and for Johnny, 
giant, you know, it's, his family has been completely wrecked by all of this stuff. And it's not, it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not fair. It's not right what, ha what she did and what happened for so many people to get <laughs> affected from this. It's, it's what? insane. And Mr. Ben. Why did she let him keep going? He, she, he was breaking. I could hear it. I could hear he was breaking. That is what you want right on the stand. I'm sure Johnny's team wished they had gotten him to break like that, but they didn't, right? And then here, he's breaking. You hear his voice cracking, all this happening. And the defense is just like, <laughs> like, that was brutal. Why did she let that happen, Christopher? And, and it's more powerful when it happens on cross. Because like I say, all the expectations, if you're on the jury and you just saw him testify under friendly softball questions by Johnny's lawyer and then comes up, Amber's lawyer going for the cross, you know she's going to go in for the kill, and you get that and a confrontation, that, that ha that's raw, that's real, much more powerful than anything he said. And then he also had, had joked around, I mean, this, you know, with this magic cream that the defense attorney was thinking that, that somehow uh, Amber put Amica on her face cream. to conceal the, you know, the, and, and it's like all of a sudden this, this grown man can't tell looking at close up when Amber's saying inspect my face to see the mark or whatever. And, and somehow no, you wouldn't notice It's magic, magic cream, cream that doesn't exist. Of course. <laughs> and, and so he, he, he was actually laughing about that. And then when he said, like, I actually kissed her on the cheek, on the side of the face that she said got hit, and she didn't kind of shirk back because you would think, like, wow, that would be a really sensitive area if you just got hit. And then the defense attorney tries to go in and talk about, like, well, how hard did you kiss? Right. And, and then <laughs> he, was, he is, he is <laughs> hilarious. This is, like, straight out of My Cousin Vinny. It was. This is great stuff. <laughs> It was totally my cousin Vinny. The two youths, the what? Uh, he was my so cousin. On the, it was, it he was, was so saying, he's like, well, how hard did you kiss her? And he's like, just like a regular peck on the cheek. And she's like, well, was it a hard kiss? And he's like, what do you want? The pressure, the torque? It was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and what was so, you can't make this stuff up. He didn't do it in a mean way, right? He did it in a very, like, he did it in a way that I feel like the whole audience was feeling. Like, we related to him because it just made her look idiotic. Like, what yeah. would, I guess my, my question then, as we get through him, but this was the main thing to talk about. What do you do when you have a guy like this? Like, part of me almost feels like you actually don't do much, right? You probably don't push too hard, but you really hammer on the look. You've gotten paid a lot, uh, you know, except, and, and you, you find ways to hit that a few different ways, correct? Would you have wasted time talking about the pressure of the kiss, or would you have hoped the jury would have forgotten that? No, no, you, you get in, you get out because it's it's just going to get worse and then argue it. And then the, you, the Amber's lawyer on closing argument could say, look, this gentleman's not familiar with women's makeup. You could tell that by looking at him or something like that. And she was wearing makeup. Amber's going to apparently testify, put the magic cream on my face right before I saw Isaac. And, and you know, when you go and argue it, um, but you don't have an argument with a witness like this, that... That was again textbook error, and and you think about this. These are these are ex lawyers should be the top of the game, right? You're you're on the Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation trial. You'd be top of your game. This was garbage. This was a terrible, terrible performance. And you know, hey, I'm glad that they did that because the truth is coming out. Right. I mean, so seeing uh, now you've seen the openings, you've seen this. I'm just curious of your sort of scoreboard so far. Do you feel like I mean, uh, do you feel like Johnny is indeed winning so far? I mean, granted, it's his opening. It's easier in a way. Yeah. But do you feel like it's been pretty over the top that it's Johnny's success so far? Yeah, my mind's changing about this because as I shared um, when we were talking about jury selection, it's like, man, you know, Johnny's take a big gamble here in these two cases because he's brought on a tremendous amount of attention on Amber's allegations. And had he let it lie and not, you know, sued, you know, would any of us been talking about it, thinking about it? Would he have lost any movie gigs as a result of it? Look, even Will Smith, it's been two weeks and we're already on to something else. We're right. on to this story. Right. It, so you kind of, you know, sometimes you just let it die is more effective than, breathing life. Now we're a couple of years after, and it's just like, we're breathing life into, we're talking about it today. It's because of the lawsuit. So I was like, ah, I don't know. That was a great choice. But if he is able to clear his name, 
in this. It's well worth it. And he is scoring points. And this is getting reported. She looks really bad. Now, of course, like you say, she's going to have a chance to put on her case. She's going to ask her softball questions. She's going to testify and cry and do the whole thing. But she's also going to be cross-examined. And from what I can see so far, his lawyers are a lot better than her lawyers, or at least on this cross-examination that I'm seeing. And so I give the advantage to John. There was one other telling thing here. Uh Is it here or hold on one second? I wanted your reaction to this. Dr. Kipper informed you. Oh, wait, hold on. That's we're going to get to Dr. Kipper. No, there was. Oh, here it was. Here's how the judge handled the end of the day. I know six weeks sound like a lot of time, but um, it's only 24 days and we've already done three days. So you have 21 days left. You know, stipulations is one of my favorite words. So you might want to consider looking back through all the evidence that you have and stipulate on a lot of information because I promised this jury would be done by Memorial Day weekend and we will be done by Memorial Day weekend. So when your time is up, your time is up. Uh, my law clerk, Sammy, is tracking everybody's time, who's how much time has been used by each side. So you'll keep doing that throughout the trial and we'll let you know on a weekly basis how it's going. But if things don't speed up in the deposition, you're just not going to get through this. So I want you to keep that in mind, okay? So I, really, I like her so far. It does feel like she's being fair, and that's a big stern warning, right? Because today we wasted hours because apparently both sides agreed to this weird – They, I don't know if you saw any of it, Christopher, but they yep. spent hours going through footage to – and a, this dry old video that they couldn't even, like, edit it to be more concise. Can you explain then, like, whose fault is this? Like, is this going to actually hurt either side that they're having to take this long? Because what I was told by other lawyers was that – that's what they agreed to. That was the process they had to do in order to get that stuff cleared. What is your take as you're seeing this warning and now we're seeing this is taking forever? How will it affect yeah. the case? So that that's the judge's role is, you know, to be a, a time manager and to make sure that we're being respectful of the jurors' time because they're taking time out of their lives and work to be there. And they want to make sure, the judge has to make sure that we're not wasting people's time. And lawyers, you know, we talk about lawyer time. You know, a lawyer says they need an hour, it means a day. And so the judge is aware of that and and just saying, hey, you you have this much time, use it how you want or waste it how you want, but we're not going to go beyond, you're not getting a continuance. And then on the video thing, I mean- Well, just sorry, before you jump on that, she can hold to that. Like there is legal, she can say, sorry, Johnny's team is done. She'll give warning, like tomorrow's your last day. Is that typically how it works? There will be some- So she she has to give fair warning, which she's done probably before the trial. She's certainly done in that clip. And she would be saying like, hey, I've had some some judges put a time timer on and be like, you got an hour. Uh, to do your argument or this examination of a witness. I don't care. You can ask the same question a hundred times over again, but once the hour's up, you're done. And, and the judge can do that. It's interesting because uh, it's like a manage. chess clock. I didn't even realize that they are keeping tabs of every time they're, they're stopping or, or fighting it. All that clock is added to sort of against their time. Yeah, to, to make sure that one side doesn't dominate because it's, it's Johnny's case at this point, eventually it'd be her case to, to rebut and bring her claims. But You know, so they they want to make sure they're fairly allocating the time. I mean, having a jury listen to recorded deposition testimony, even though it had that cool background of that beautiful building. um, That got old real fast. (laughs) It's it's really, really rough. And and they got to explain that. Why why do you think why did we need to watch that? I mean, to to, to understand, like, what was seen, um, what was not seen. I guess there's this missing clip, unfortunately, about the pretend punch. And, you know, I'm not sure how much it adds. The jury is, you know, it's, it's, it's hard enough for us to watch something that we don't want to watch on the Internet or on TV. But if you're a jury, you're stuck there. You can't take a break. You can't just pull out your phone and start looking at stuff. So it's like torture. Right. And so I, I don't think, hey, sometimes you just got to play stuff or sometimes you got to do like DNA evidence and it just takes all day. And it's like, wow, but you just got to do it. But I would have put that late in the case. I wouldn't lead with that. And and I'm also thinking about why didn't they call Johnny as a first witness? And, you know, sometimes you you want to lead with your strongest witness and they're going more in the chronological order. Let me talk about your childhood. Let me talk about how you reacted when you saw domestic violence in your home, thought that was very effective. You withdrew. 
you're not an abuser. When you were abused by Amber, the inference there is you withdrew. You didn't fight back. Right. So that was very effective. All these witnesses are helping. So when Johnny does take the stand, they'll remember more of this. Correct. That's right. And it also lets him get the flow because, you know, you got to put yourself in, in the shoes of Johnny. If you're there, you know, I mean, hey, acting is his thing. Being in court's really not his thing. And so, you know, lawyers were in court all the time. We, we, we understand how it works. So they're letting him acclimate, acclimate to this judge. You know, what is a judge like or not like? What is a jury kind of reacting to things? Letting the jury see him and kind of this building up to the testimony. You know, uh, when he, you know, so he's there, he's this big presence in the courtroom, but they haven't heard from him yet. So it's kind of this dramatic build. And then eventually he gets up on the stand, but this gives him some level of comfort because he's now going to be in the courtroom many days. He's familiar with the routine. He can kind of absorb this as, as an actor would do. Right. So I like that they didn't just lead with him, but at, at some point the jury's going to be thinking like, Hey man, well, why isn't Johnny taking the stand here? And, and that may be a sign of a weakness if they wait too long to think that, that, you know, they don't think he's going to perform well. Yeah. Well, so, and, and I'm sorry, Robin and, and Linda and Paige. I obviously when Christopher came in, I got much more interested to hear his legal take because I haven't heard in a while. So b- bear with me, but thank you for being there. Uh, Christopher, the other thing while I have you, cause I don't want to keep you too much longer, but the, what was interesting is they, when they focused on um, the sister earlier in the day, they were they, and they've been doing this throughout. They're really they're really hey, focused on Welcome the um, sorry, hold on. They're really focused on he's blackout drunk, he's doing drugs, etc. And, and the frustration for me is just like, well, that doesn't mean he did what he did. Like no. they're so hung up on it. So uh, there was a whole point with the sister earlier in the day as we're talking our recap here of just like this doctor emailed you and said that how, you wanted Johnny to get help, and so she's clearly struggling, not wanting to go there and admit certain things right about her brother. I get it. But yeah, I'm sure there was a point she did, and she made, she did. She owned it. She's like, yeah, about the pills. I had a problem when he was addicted to prescription pills, and we, we were seeking help, and that happened there. But no, the drugs and alcohol, that was what it was. Um, but it really does feel like the defense is really just, that's their big thing. as well Because I guess they won that in the UK in a way. But they're just like, well, no, he's a drunk. He's blackout drunk. He does drugs. He must hit women too, is sort of where they keep yeah. just going. Do you think that's actually going to be a good defense in this? Does that will that work here in Virginia? You think like it worked to the UK judge? What are your thoughts it, it, when you hear that they're doing that so much? Oh yeah, it, it could absolutely be effective, and and so because some te- people do paint others with a very broad brush, and if they think oh you've got a drug and alcohol problem, and then they'll just expand onto that oh you know because maybe they've had experiences with people. Um, you know, in those states and they figure, oh, well, he's probably violent and he just doesn't remember it. And so it is effective for the defense to go after that. Felt bad for the sister because she was put on the spot about those text messages about, you know, no, whatever, no booze, no coke and no pills. I got to think she would have known that's coming and been a little bit better prepared. I think she was being very cautious not to open up the door to admit to anything that would then lead to, you know, further questioning. But for her to say, like, I wasn't really sure what I was talking about then, I kind of think that really hurt her credibility. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I've got to, again, we're calling it honest. It didn't help, but I still think the cross, I don't know, I didn't think the cross or any of it really worked. I thought the sister was kind of, the most useful thing was setting up the, the history. I think that was the best thing that sort of came out of the sister. And sure, they keep arguing this drug defense, but you make a good point. In fact, I, I, well, I know I, I'm, I was going to ask a poll, but I know how you guys are going to answer. You guys are all Team Johnny Depp. But I, I, if we looked at it unbiasedly, will this drug defense really sway people? Because it frustrates me because, look, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you black out because you're tired and you don't ever do that. So uh, it, it's just interesting that they're really leaning on that defense. And then they were leaning on the defense here, too. Uh, where they talked about this doctor. Um, do you know? See, I could read this, but I, I don't recall. Off. Sorry, I don't. I guess I lost the exact point. Uh, but there was there's a doctor they keep talking about this. Um, uh, bear with me. Here he is, Doctor David Kipper. Do you know about concierge medicine? Is that a is that a is that legit? Like it sounds like it's a guy who's just there twenty four seven telling you what you want. Is this a more reliable medical expert in your opinion? Any any insight on that? So we, we've had this issue come up in, in, in some cases for some very wealthy people who have had drug or alcohol problems. And, you know, they, they do get concierge medical attention and, and they do get also some people who are 
um, really not going to tell the patient the way that, you know, a doctor that you and I would go to. Um, because so they're on they staff wanna, with the patient, correct? Yeah, it's it's there's some blurred lines that happen when you have a lot of money or fame, I think. And, and, and I, I don't know about Dr. Kipper, and I'm sure he's not in this category, but there are some doctors who uh, will basically facilitate the drug abuse problem um, and, and really help cover for it, um, even prescribe some medication. Uh, yeah, I always think abused. like Michael Jackson, like that, uh, the guy who, who got into that whole thing. There's a lot of these doctors who can, uh, Murray, uh, but yeah, yeah. that there, there, look, we're not, I, I don't have proof. I'm I, we're being very yeah. careful. I'm not trying to accuse him, yeah. but there is potentially a lot. One could go against this doctor who's trying to sway and, and tell his sister he needs help, et cetera. Well, you know, we, we, we kind of hope that everyone had his best interests in mind. And I think what, you know, and maybe we'll see during the course of this that Johnny's team comes out and somebody will talk about how he acts when he's under the influence of things. Because we all know we have friends or family. We know like, OK, this person gets drunk and they get violent, you know, or they're going to argue. And or like me, if I have too much to drink, I just go to sleep. I'm just, you know, that's, just <laughs> yeah. ha that's, just, that's just what happens to me. You know, I, and 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 so we kind of know that. And, and so it would be helpful to put on some of that evidence to say, like, no, you know, Johnny doesn't get violent when he's under the influence of anything. And then that would diffuse a lot of that. And then he can in his testimony, he can just kind of own it and say, like, yeah, I've struggled with this. And certainly having Amber Heard in my life made it worse. And now he's kind of flipping it on her to say that, you know, the, it was not helpful to his recovery or sobriety to be in an, a, an abusive or destructive relationship. So now he's taking that bad fact and he's flipping it back on her. So it's just rather than being in denial, like, you know, and I don't know that he's going to do this, but they're like, oh, I don't have a problem. Right. No, he 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 opened about it in the UK. We're going to hear, I'm sure, open up, and he has to address it. Just one more thing before I move on from Dr. Kipper, that Brian Fellow and, and uh, Winona's writers on Twitter does a lot of deep dives too, and it's compiling things. But there's a good thread here, and this this audio is pretty hard to. Maybe she should have done something. Basically, this is where uh, this is audio that we have. Where Amber admits to shattering Johnny's finger, and the nurse and Dr. Kipper discuss giving her a higher dose of her usual meds to calm her down never meant to hurt him i didn't do it on purpose uh there, there's a lot of telling it's hard to hear that's what has the subtitles she usually takes it so look there, there was messy. There, there was a lot of drugs and things going on both sides of this relationship, and so it's interesting when they keep using that against him. Uh, and then here's again the the twenty four seven doctor they have on call to deal with both of them as things arise. I can't lose him. After smashing his finger. And then there's the whole other thread where Amber admits to doing coke and later confirms she did indeed does drugs. Uh, look, there's so much of the audio where she's just yeah. caught doing these things. So it's just important we keep everyone honest because they want to focus on the drug, 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 drugs. But Amber's just as equal. Well, do you think they're going to pull some of this out and, and try to, to sway it back as Amber as being a user too? once they establish the Johnny narrative of his background and sort of the witnesses? What do you predict moving forward? Yeah, I think that that's a great angle and, and to, to throw it right back at her and, um, and, and then to maybe get some witnesses that would corroborate that, that when Amber is under the influence of, you know, multiple medications and I looked up the Seroquel and it's a, you yeah, know, it's an it antipsychotic, oh. antipsychotic drug and that she's mixing potentially with other drugs. Like, how does she perform? Is she right. the one who gets violent and aggressive? So uh, that could end up hurting her. I'm sure she knows this is all coming. But, um, you know, the risk is, is that we have, you know, a juror that's that's maybe super conservative, uh, doesn't approve or know of any of these type of things. And is just like, you know, hey, I don't like any of these folks. Get get out of my presence. 
Um, we just don't know, you know, uh, we don't know anything about these jurors really. Um, so that, that's a risk, but I think it, it's good to go back and flip it on her. And just bru- bravo to all the reporters out there who've been doing this. All you, the YouTubers, Brian, Jax, Laura, I'm trying to get them in. So many people, uh, uh, Sienna here, so many uh, people have been really diving into this case that really saved Johnny because everyone, I think, just wrote him off and thought, oh, yeah, he's a drunk rocker or whatever. But no, the reality and why this case has really taken so much so heights is because they put in the work. They, they really got the evidence and they, they exposed her. And now she's caught against the wall. And I think just a lot of us are rooting for the truth to come out so this woman can finally take that accountability, which, again, full circle, what Isaac said out loud to real emotions, it's just everything is falling into place of like, well, yeah, this is the story. It'll be fascinating to see how Amber handles all this. Uh, yeah, Christopher, you're welcome here, but I, I don't want to keep you. I know you have a spring break there, too. But any final thoughts or words you want to add legally uh, before you go? Well, yeah, it is good to see everyone in the community coming together and putting all this level of intensity on the story, um, because that's how Brittany's case cracked. That's how this case will crack. And that all makes a difference. And I think that the attorneys do look at this stuff. I think that was happening in Brittany's case, that they, they were looking at what people in the Free Brittany movement were doing and taking cues from it. And I hope that Johnny's team is doing the same thing, because just that what you pulled up, that thread is incredible. And there's so much out there. So uh, keep on it, everybody. Great, great work. Um, I'm going to be doing my own media commentary to other you know, outlets. So I'm trying to learn as much as I can we will about the story you, to try and get that narrative out there. Because honestly, a lot of the traditional media coverage is very superficial. And, and to get that story out there about the lies that Amber has told and the inconsistencies in her story so people can understand like what Johnny's up against and why he's trying to clear his name. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people coming in at the end to do it, but I'll take it because anything that gets the truth out there is cute. Cool. But I know you've just been busy, and, I, and I'm so grateful that I can help educate you properly so you can get out there and be a mouthpiece for us. So please, yes, sir, do it. If you guys want to follow Christopher, you can go find him on Twitter, Christopher Melcher, or uh, it's Lawyer Divorce on uh Twitter, or you can go to you, uh, YouTube, CCMESQ, to support him on Twitter. I'm uh, sorry, on YouTube. Thank you, sir. I hope to have you back. Now that you're getting in to have time, please pop in anytime to help us with the legal uh, expertise. And I'm going to clip it here. So I'm going to talk still to, to Linda, Paige, Robin. We got lots more of your comments and things. But if you become a member, you get the full unedited extra show at the end as well. I'm going to be posting after shows of our show just to try and keep these episodes shorter is really why I'm doing it. These streams get these streams will get trimmed. I try to keep it within an hour hour and a half and we're getting pushing there because i just don't want it to be too daunting for people trying to catch up so i'm going to clip it here if you're watching live don't go anywhere we're not done live viewers i will clip this portion for all my amazing popcorn planet members if you missed it go check the members only playlist and you'll be able to watch our continued conversation on day two of the trial